Yep, FPRL is back on a Sunday and it's tier fours. And you will know that I am in fact Rooser1872. Yes, double duties this week. About damn time I do just that. Anyway, welcome to round 17 of our tier four championship. We are still at, we're still at Mexico and potentially, well, I say potentially, our third of four races this week with tier ones, hopefully, following on tomorrow. As said, I'm Cruiser1872, and joining me is, um, is Cross Today1888, who himself is um, ravaged with a cold. So, Cross Today, how are you holding up? Oh, not too bad for a minute, hopefully. The good action tonight will keep me good for another hour or two. Yeah, so I'm going to... Uh, I don't want to try and sound rude saying this, but I'm going to try and do as much of the heavy lifting as I can. Give yourself a bit of a rest and or break. Who you, uh, I should say as well, you and Collateral Lads, I think, have been developing quite a nice partnership for Tier 4, slowly making it your own. But I think uh, as um, for Collateral Lads, he had other plans tonight and is booked to night out with the... Well, I think it's rather booked to night in rather than a night out. But still, we are here, Tier 4, and we've got Magic Ram in the Alpine heading towards the stadium and we'll follow him for the first lap of this 18 minute qualifying session and get a quick tour of the Mexican Grand Prix uh, circuit named, I believe it's the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, pardon the terrible Spanish pronunciation, but still down the pit straight and one of the longest straights on the calendar expect a lot of overtaking down here a very high speeds 206 miles an hour slamming on the brakes towards turn one and a very fiddly section of the track so, uh, turn two and turn three that chicane can really throw you off and ruin your first sector but magic ram fares quite well actually and it's the first sector of a 29-0 and as always with the first runs in qualifying it's important to get a good banker lap in for the final runs and um, ironically um, 15 minutes time as I said the single qualifying session of 18 minutes and this will determine our grid but Magic Ram going through the S's that's all out of line and that's an invalidation for the Alpine and see there as well very annoyed with himself because that looked like a decent lap but is he going to back out of it? Yeah he's going to back out of that lap so that's not ideal but there goes a Haas of Skull Kid, it's not Skull Kid, that's actually Mark on his outlap. We're going to follow Skull Kid though, just ahead of him, I think, is Rainbow in the McLaren. And then Rainbow as well, he's been getting uh, he's been getting a bit better actually throughout the throughout the season. He's been holding his own and hoping for a better result tonight. Anyway, Skull Kid, one who I think is very impressive since they've arrived in the scene. Picking up, I think, uh, debut points at their opening round in Austria. And around the final few corners we go for the Haas driver and to set a lap of 1 minute 20, point 0.1, Rainbow just ahead set their lap and behind them is the Red Bull of the Tattooed Star. So the father and son duo, I think Tattooed Star getting a slip tune there from Rainbow, albeit a bit distant. But they'd still get a decent lap to start, David Lowface going on their run, but I think crucially as well, one driver to keep an eye on, along with Steele is Mick Vitt, or uh, I think we'll I think I'm going to refer to them as Vitt for the remainder of the evening, even though the name says Mick Vitties. I, prefer, I do prefer a rich team myself. Anyway, we'll go to our championship standings because Vitt is our championship leader on 163 points as Mongo sets a 17-9 on a set of mediums. Vitt to the line, 17-4 on softs. Anyway, Vitt 163 points and I make that a gap of 26 points to the tied Steel and Scotsman but Steel hasn't more victories to his name and that is why he's ahead of Scotsman in the standings but still Steel, Vitt and Scotsman as well making his return picking up a podium at Cota all three of these drivers need need a good result in qualifying but I'd say as well Cross today for this track in particular, it's one of the very few circuits you don't want to start on the front row. Yeah, we say it in 
real life and we see it again in the game you know it's, it seems to be p2 and p3 is exactly where you want to start it's just such a long run down into that turn one you can that it's just such a big slipstream you can gain off the guy on pole but hopefully we will see it again tonight so you know p2 p3 on the grid it's not the worst thing to be having if anything it's the best place to be starting Well, I let me pick you up there in my in my headset. Just uh, just a quick check. A lot. Yeah, I've I've uh, no, I've got you now. Just I think my headset was a little bit too low. Hey, you not know, oh, hey, yeah, you not. Know, we'll, we'll go with this maximum volume. Anyway, the flow through the middle sector and another driver as well. He's actually been faring reasonably well in. Uh, in tier four, actually, have a look at the standings as well to see that he is actually in fifth place, just ahead of the Alfa Romeo duo of Fox and Mongo. So another important night as well for the flow. And my old comms partner for tier two goes to the top of the standings ahead of Steel. And the flow, looking like he's uh, in the groove tonight in qualifying, at least for his first run. Who else is on the lap actually? Oh, the Haas and the Ferrari getting a bit close together. Rare Winter almost, I think that might have been Skull Kid. Both of them almost colliding with each other going through his turn, turn two. Yeah, I think there was a bit of contact there. Um, Rare Winter, he's been great in qualifying in the past couple of weeks. I was just keeping an eye on him and it just looked like the Haas didn't want to yield the position going around into turn one. Just run a bit deep and just, I don't know if it was a lack of awareness or not, but it did seem like it was only a bit of a wheel bang. So Rare Winter should be fine enough to just save up his ARS and go again here his next lap. Yeah, I think for the wiser actually, but I'm going to say this as well, a big welcome back to Scotsman. And just say this as well, obviously since I'm on the mic, but again, welcome back to the Red Bull driver and the team is whole once again, Scotsman and the Tattoo Star, former teammates I believe, in Tier 3 uh, a couple of seasons ago, as red as cool goes up to, I was up in the net pole position, I won 17-0, so we're seeing a lot of evolution around this track, and the time's beginning to tumble, and the track ramps up, Scotsman now, going through the final corner, a short run to the line, are we in the 16s? Not quite, but it's a front row for Scotsman, and now the flow down in third, who's left to do a lap, as mentioned, Real Winter, actually in the pits there. Uh, we got Radical, Frenchy, and Fish Steps, the four yet to set a lap time. The Tattoo Stars just completed a lap. There's up in 12th. And another driver, too, which I'm going to give a big uh, shout out as well to, is Stars Orphan. I think demonstrating the importance of keeping it clean in a race. No penalties. And he got second place, his first podium in FPRL at the Circuit of the Americas last time out. So. Definitely got a lot of momentum tonight as the Alpha Tauri driver and is currently up in 10th. That was says as well, Stars off and he's had a very strong season for his first full campaign. And hoping it continues for tonight as that I think is actually the first initial run done. So Breda's cool leads the way ahead of Scotsman, Flo, Steel, crucially, ahead of Vit in that Aston Martin, Magic Ram, Marco, Fox, Mondo and Stars off in the top 10 with Sid. In 11th, Tattoo Star, David, Willie Bum, Strokehead and Rainbow, the drivers to have a lap time so far. You have a uh, quick mention as well to a, great, a big hello in the chat. Uh, Stotsman saying good luck to everyone. Nigel saying that he had a max speed of 201 miles an hour compared to Magic Ram's 206. And also says politely, you can't get rid of this guy. I think in reference to me. Nigel, you, you love me really. And good luck in tier two. Now I can be as biased as I want. And fully support you for tier two. You bring that trophy home in Brazil. Anyway, Frenchy around the final corner. I went to the 16s. Not quite a wider line, but still fifth place. And the Williams now sandwich steel. Uh, Trying to have a look through uh, Real Winters back out on a lap. We have fish sticks in the Mercedes going through the middle sector. What is their time now? 57.8 for the middle sector split. And apparently a purple middle sector. And as always, uh, I believe it when I see it, when we see the standings around the stadium now for fish sticks. 
And there's a slip out. Fish Sticks has had a very on and off season, and that's an invalidation at the final corner. Critical there for Fish Sticks. Crosses the line of 118.2. Would have put him ahead of Stars Orphan in 11th, but that is not what the Mercedes driver needs at this stage in qualifying. As well, seven minutes to go cross today. Anyone else, anyone you think's actually been impressive so far? As I see Momro went up to fifth of, uh, just there. But I'm just saying, so well, Brett is cool. He's had a few good runs in qualifying, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been pretty consistent in qualifying. Um, he has normally been up this high. He's normally P5, P6. But to see him up to the top is pretty good. You know, it's nice to see someone else there talking. Uh, a bit different than the heavy hitters of Stain. Robert, he's going to be a qualifier and leading the flow. Um, someone that you'd say probably could be looking out for could be even Magic Ram. But just been watching him and he looked pretty consistent around this track and he was just about to start his lap, so it'd be worth watching, keep an eye on him, see how he does throughout this one. That will certainly do, but we're going to follow Rear Winter for the remainder of his lap. I think it was a 28 6. For the first set, it looked a bit cautious there going through the um, opening few corners of the yellow flag actually up at the stadium. That is the Alfa Romeos of Mondo and Fox just keeping out of each other's way. Mondo on a flying lap, Fox on an out lap. Probably did get a slipstream down towards turn one after Mondo does his lap. Rare winter are going through the stadium and in the game at least we have the Las Vegas livery. One of about 20,000 actually from the teams at the Las Vegas race and it surprised me quite a bit as Rare Winter goodness me that that is a statement to the field around them a 116.608 and it's a Ferrari 1-2 but 4 tenths of a second between them Rare Winter what an effort that is He's just showing the field exactly what he's been showing in the past four or five weeks. It's just, can he now convert this pole position again? Yeah, well, not pole position just yet, but provisional pole in their win. He just hasn't been able to do it so far. This could be his chance to be left by the Ferrari gang as they do set one and two. Magic Ram going for a second lap there, but doesn't improve on his time. And he's got five minutes left. He could actually get back to the pits in time. Um, let's have a look at Rainbow. Let's see how he done. He actually improved in his time there. Still down in 18th place though with Rainbow. But anything can happen in the race. And I still remember him picking up his first points at Zanver, I think, last season. He just kept his nose clean and he was there to pick up the scraps. And that's sometimes what you have to do in these races. Uh, Fox, the my tier three commentator. Let's see how he does for his second run and potentially his final run. He's got no battery there. May have actually just set a lap time there to go right behind his teammate. I think he actually did just complete a lap there. Goes up to 7th, or 17-3. Maybe he's, um, why he's rushing to get back to the pits. Marco, down in 11th for the Haas team. Stars off and out in another lap, along with Radical and Fish Sticks, the two at the bottom, yet to set a lap time. As of a yellow flag down towards turn four, that Looks like an Alpine going a bit slowly there. I think that might be Magic Ram on their cooldown, as well as Skullkid on their outlap, just I think trying to burn off some fuel. Anyway, Marco round the final corner. Looking pretty quick here for Marco. Put some eighth. Not a bad effort for the Haas driver. Yeah, it's kind of where he was last week, you know. Still waiting to get them points on the board, but you know, with consistency qualifying that he's starting to show. Maybe this is his chance to finally get the points I want for the Haas team. I'll definitely say that as Magic Ram has retired in the pit lane. So doesn't think he has enough time to get around again or he's actually used up all of his tyres in qualifying. He won't go again so he's going to be at best 11th place. But from one Alpine to another, Radical is going to go for their flying lap now. Maybe actually made a mistake on that run. So two flying lap. Well, uh, well, I'll say rather that. Uh, a uh, Sighter lap and now a flying lap for Radical. And they're going to be the one and only lap time in this session. Fish Sticks actually ahead of them on the track. So keep an eye on both of them. Fish Sticks will cross the line first though. So we'll, we'll stick with them for the remainder of the lap time. 
through the middle set to expect a lot of penalties around here and a couple of invalidations too, especially in the race. This is very prone to warnings for our drivers and just like that. Actually, that's uh, Haas there. I think that might be Marco keeping out the way of Fish Sticks. Doing well, actually, to stay out the way there. But single file through the middle sector. Fish Sticks through the stadium. And where's this going to put the Mercedes? He has to get something on the board here. Two and a half minutes to go. This will be their sole run in this qualifying session to the line those Fish Sticks, and it puts them up to fifth ahead of Steel. That's a very strong effort that from Fish Sticks for one effort. And I think that might have been his best shot. Yeah, it's absolutely cracking laughing fish sticks, you know, is the one and done kind of thing. He's obviously invalidated his previous attempt. You know, he had to keep it clean and quick, and which he has done. To be really two tenths off the pace, obviously, instead of uh, not including rare winter. Pardon me, uh, uh, my freaking mic was muted, pardon me. Anyway, we're just going to follow the flow. It was going to happen at one point. We're going to follow the flow through sector two, and he's up by half a second on his lap time. Rare Winter might actually have a reason to be on that outlap. The flow is certainly putting him under pressure here. If he can just gain a little bit more time in his final sector, he is on for provisional pole. Take the shortest line as you can to, to the check flag, and it's a 16-5 for the flow. That... Is, that's a statement to the gauntlet right there. Real Winter threw it down and the flow has picked up picked up the challenge and he is now accepted. Real Winter's call. Can we see Real Winter respond from that? Obviously we've got him, his teammate and Scotsman all on the right laps of there. Nick, like, they're going to be the last three really to cross the line that can really give uh, the flow a big challenge. Going to follow Steele here for the remainder of his lap. Where's this going to put him? Maybe up in the front row? Put some fourth, and that is actually not bad for the Mercedes. Is that? He's, I think they might have actually um, disconnected. It's certainly a disconnect of sorts. He's coasting down the pit straight. What's happened here to Steele? Oh, he's, he's, re he's reading control here. I think actually he might have. If he is on a uh, steering wheel or, or a controller, actually, he might have just had a disconnect of, the, of actually the controller itself. But thankfully, that's all restored for the race to follow. And here is actually the Ferraris giving each other a bit of momentum here. Rare Winter is giving a slipstream to Bread as Cool as the checker flags out. Scotsman up in fifth, and that will do him good for the race. He's just set that lap time. Might actually be going again. Vitt has invalidated his lap. And that is important for both Steele and Scotsman. Vitt's going to start down in 11th place unless anyone else can improve. David's down by half a second. I'm not sure if he will. Stars Orphans up by three tenths. And this will put him up towards Vitt. Is it going to beat him though? Round the final corner for Stars Orphan. And it stays 15th. He'd lost time there. Tattoo start up to 13th. Sid is out of qualifying. Rainbow props up the order, but now we look to the Ferraris. Bread is cool, is matching his time. But let's look at Rare Winter. Where would this put him? Because if he Oops. gets pulled, that's a bit slidey though out of the, out of the stadium. Is that going to cost him time? Around the final corner goes the Ferraris. Rare Winter to take the flag first. And Rare Winter, he does just enough to get pole, but Bread, Bread is not going to improve. So Rare Winter will take pole position for tonight unless Scotsman has anything to say. And I don't think he will. He's down marginally in his time and he's aborted that lap. So that is going to be a pole position for Rhea Winter. And Bread is cool, is going to get the slipstream down to turn one. So both of the Ferraris already have got a tactical advantage ahead of the flow and crucially, Steel and Stotsman. That was very actually interesting to see there, Rhea Winter, with that mistake. He was already two and a half tenths up. Through the second set, and he's obviously lost a couple of tens of hours. We could have seen him maybe 16 dead or somehow maybe in a high 15, which would have been nice to see. But now, can he get the help from his teammate starting P3 with that slipstream? Can they both try to fend off the flow going into turn one? And actually, just having a look here through our, um, through our chat, 
I've um, I've actually noticed that rare winter's lap time is gonna get uh, would have gotten second place in tier three. That just demonstrates and showed how perfect that would have been for the Ferrari driver, and that is what he would have hoped for for tonight's tier four Mexican Grand Prix. The flow up in second and some four tenths between the Williams and the other Ferrari of Red is cool. Steel up in fourth for the Mercedes team, Scotsman, Frenchy, and crucially for Fish Sticks and for Steel, he is there in support of his teammate up in seventh. Mongo, Fox, and Marco round at the top ten, Vet down in eleventh place. And we'll need another recovery, I think. A bit like what Raza Gamer managed in tier two. Can he make it second place and limit the damage? We will see. Magic Ram, a tattoo star, Radical David, Stars Orphan, Sid, Willie Bum, Stroll Kid and Rainbow round out the field for tonight's Tier 4 Mexican Grand Prix. And as we head to the waiting menu, bright sunny skies all around Mexico. I see Monkey Boy Kurt joking around saying that's Real Winter uh, promoted for next season off of his qualifying pace. We got Andy Gamer in the chat saying... <laughs> uh, Andy Gamer saying go Ferrari team. I think the Tifosi are in limbs right now. First and third. See if they can actually make uh, another victory tonight. Oh, Cruzadoro's making his appearance. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so Grocery, what do you want to talk about? There's nothing football related, by the way, I'm not in the mood. Sure. I mean, after what I saw in the chat yesterday, you know, we could talk about that. Oh, we're oh. going. Well, conversation cut short there. Looks like somebody, um, readied up a bit too early. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, well, there goes our conversation street, and now let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, tyres. Majority of the field on medium tyres to start. I don't think that's actually. I think it might actually be because nobody could get their strategy set. Rainbow has been disqualified, probably because they're not even at their console to take the start. Probably went off to get a drink. Anyway, um, let's go through the grid. At least um, what is of it. Rainbow has said the disqualified will start at the back. Regardless, still kid, 19th place on a set of cars. Then we got the other McLaren of Willie Bum on a set of ours as well. P17 is Sid Sandwich in the Aston Martin in a set of mediums. P16 and P15 is the Alpha Tauri duo or Racing Bulls, terrible name, of Stars Orphan and David Lawface, both of them on medium tyres for the start. P14 is the Alpine of Radical and in 13, former teammate Tattoo Star on a set of soft, Radical went for a set of hards. P12 is the Alpine, I think Tattoo Star and a bit of a baguette there, between the Alpines, Magic Ram on a set of mediums in P11. Crucially, is our championship leader, Vit, on a set of mediums. And Scotsman, over to you for the top 10. Scotsman, yeah. Well, for the top 10. <laughs> uh, P10 in the house, good qualifying again this week is Marco. Uh, the two Alpha Metals of Mondo and uh, Fox, but starting in the mediums is P8 and P9. Fish sticks in the Mercedes is P6 or uh, P7. Frenchy P6 in the Williams. Scotsman is P5 in the Red Bull. Steel P4 in the Mercedes, starting on the hards. It'll be interesting to see how he fits away and uh, if he can keep the pace up. P3 is Bread is Cool. The flow is P2 in the Williams. And our pole man for today, as we have a Ferrari into the wall, is Rare Winter. Yeah, I don't think you want to do that for your start, um, Bread. But Rare Winter on pole and the flow ready and waiting. I think he's actually angled himself. He's angled himself ever so slightly towards Rare Winter just to try and pick up the slipstream. But Rare is Winter. Oh, well, Rare is Winter. Oh dear. Rare Winter and Bread is cool. Both of them to have a great chance here to be 1 2 at the start of the race and to head down towards turn 1 as the five lights light up the track. We wait, 
and away we go in Mexico. Real Winter gets a decent start there, but the flow right behind but one start there. I think that's Epic Frenchy. What a start from him in the Williams. Already trying to make a move on slow London. In towards turn one, four wide, and there's a collision there between Frenchy and, and between Steele just about to get away with it. And Scotsman's up to second in towards turn one. Brendan Stone's had a terrible start in that Ferrari from third down to fifth. But where is Winter? Oh, I've done it again. Scotsman and the flow challenging steel in towards turn four. Can the Williams get ahead of the, of the Mercedes? Indeed he can. The flow's up to third. Steel, Frenchy and Bread is cooled down to sixth place from third on the drift. That's a nightmare start for him. But Rear Winter finally got it right. Has got the start he wanted. But crucially, oh, there's a collision at the back. I just saw that. I think First Sticks had a collision with Fox. But the Tattoo Star has made up places there up to ninth from 13th on the drift. That's a good start from him. And as I was saying too, crucially for Steele, he's maintained station, but and even more crucially for Scotsman, he's up to second now, his bits only, down in 11th place, he's not made up places at, at the start of this race. The big two cars off at the back of the field, looks like oh. Sid and Magic Ram came together at the end of the S section. Luckily both of them have kept it out of the wall, it does look like. Yeah, Magic, Magic Ram had wind damage though, so they have to make an early pit stop. Anyway, Rear Winter, one second just about ahead of Scotsman, but the flow right behind the Red Bull. Not wasting any time here is the Williams, and also not wasting any time. This is his teammate, Epic Frenchy, down the inside of Steel in towards turn one. He gets the place. Williams now third and fourth ahead of Steel. Red is cool now, still in sixth, and the Tattoo Stars actually made up a place on Fish Sticks there, up to eighth really benefiting from these soft tyres but they're going to fall off in a few laps time so make up as many places as you can or gamble maybe on an early safety car which I think Magic Ram is hoping happens to get him back in this race now at the back of the field and their possible race strategies soft to medium for a tattoo star on lap 15 potentially and Speaking of soft runners, Skullkid getting by Marco in towards turn 6 and turn 7. Skullkid on the hards, Marco on the softs, and both of the Hasses now starting to fight. Going through the S's section with Radical and Stars off and looming large behind them. And David Lowface too, actually having a decent start himself from 15th up to 12th and right behind Vip. Who just he seems to be struggling here with Vip. I'm not sure if he's, um, he's got a setup right. Yeah, normally, we've seen it last week, he came from P15 to fight through for the win. Well, I'm very surprised he hasn't really been able to fight through the field in the first couple of laps. Maybe it could be something to do with tyre challenge, or he's just taking it easy with the horse, but he is keeping his battery uh, levels quite high. He could just let the race settle down for a couple of laps and then start making his moves up. And both here to Scotsman as Rear Winter taking a very early defensive line here, defending fresh air a little bit as the Ferrari driver, just taking a bit of an awkward line. So Scotsman doesn't get the slipstream. Half a second between Rear Winter and Scotsman, the Ferrari and the Red Bull, the flow 1.3 further back. And now at, I've heard of the fish sticks train, this is the Frenchy Express forming behind the Williams driver. Frenchy, Steel, Bread and Mongo in close vicinity as fish sticks actually starting to catch up. To, uh, to the Tattoo Star, who's a second behind them as well. As we go through the S section, Greg is actually right behind Steel. And with the DRS, is he going to make a move here and towards turn 12? I don't think he is. Not really a rare overtaking. It's a rare overtaking place, as Cruiser Doldo has made an appearance known as it's Squeaky Toy Central here at the, the rest of the household. Right, he's just getting himself in the mood for the race. Anyway, he's still falling by this here, but keep an eye out as well for Scott for the previous school cool. gets a massive snap there, and there goes his chance. Is that going to allow Mongo to get a run on him? I do think it is. Mongo just keeping that battery in store and in check. Anyway, here goes Scotsman though, from one Ferrari to another. Scotsman now around the outside of Real Winter, into towards turn one. Scotsman gets the place and takes the lead on lap four in Mexico. And the thing as well with Mexico, the DRS detection point at the stadium counts for two sectors. So Scotsman will have DRS to help defend against the Ferrari and has that first place at least for a little bit longer. I think now it's time to see if Scotsman can pull away. Obviously he's used a lot more of his battery than what Rare Winter has. You see Rare Winter right on the tail of Scotsman, not giving him a second to breathe. It could be interesting to see these two could be just batting away and that will allow the flow and even Frenchy to come up from behind. It's going to stay like this. 
I think that's what the flow would actually want, is for these two to start fighting, going through, and more importantly, in the middle sector, but Strotsman, he hasn't pulled away too much from Rear Winter, as it's only three tenths of a second between himself and the Ferrari, but Flo 1.2 further back, he's just not within DRS range, and he's gonna have to sit behind for another lap, as Rear Winter's gonna make the move on Strotsman into what's turn one, three tenths of a second, Rear Winter, 65% battery, to Strotsman on 30% Strotsman, not using that battery to defend, and I think he's just rather accepted. It's gonna be a bit of a pendulum between himself and Rear Winter at the front. Don't fight too hard, but you bring more people into the fight. So Rare Winter and, and Strotsman, a bit of a neutral agreement for the moment between the pair of them just to build that gap to the flow. And Epic French is still, still holding on to fifth. But Brennan's crew is all over the back of that Mercedes in towards turns four. Brennan's crew looking around the outside of Steel and breaks a little bit later than the Mercedes. He's going to be inside lane for turn five. Is Steel going to lose the place here? Yes, he is. And he's going to lose the place here to Mongo, who's right behind him. Red now going down the inside of turn six and turn seven. Snap over Steel though at the exit. That will give Steel the breathing room. But I mentioned about the fighting. That gap was at one second. It's now 1.7 seconds between Frenchie and Steel. Because of that tussling, they've now lost out on DRS to the Williams in front. It was great defending from Steel to be fair to him. The only problem was it, as you said, he did lose seven, seven, or seven tenths. Just going side by side through three or four corners. Which to here for me I would just sit behind the car and just use the DRS. You don't even need to use your battery. You can let the guy in front defend for a couple of laps with his battery and just take it from there. Just the follow right now into us turn one himself and Fox fighting over 10th place and a sole point in this race. But any point for Vet is gonna be crucial in this championship pursuit he's in with Steele and Scotsman ahead. Steele's actually now down in seven places, he lost two places there to Breda's crew and now to Mongo because of that low battery. But Vit now up to 10 for Scotsman made the move on Real Winter, will jump now towards the top. Real Winter, I think, may have actually went a bit deep in towards turn four and has now lost out to the Red Bull. But again, it's just gonna be a pendulum up at the front. And as long as they don't lose too much time to the flow, I don't think Real Winter would really mind too much. No, the gaps only came down, I think, two tenths at the minute, I think. Oh, he's had a massive snap, and he's actually lost his front wing. Oh, he's contact with the flow. Oh, no. And just like that, this race has went from bad to worse for the Ferrari. He lost the place, he was just settling in, and now he's lost his front wing for Real Winter, the man who was so cool and composed in qualifying, has lost his head in the race. He's now have to now change that front wing and get it well at least get a front wing in the car because he's under steaming almost into epic frenzy there and a five second penalty into the pits that is not what he needs and just compounds it for the ferrari he's going to get serviced by his team hopefully not a 17 million second pit stop from ferrari which even they can't manage but never say never Meanwhile, Frenchy now getting ahead of Mongo in towards turn one is he i'm not sure he's make that stick he isn't Mongo shuts the door on him and does not want to let go of fourth place that easily. But as well, that's a three place game there for Steele. And Strotsman now has a three second lead over the flow. And as it stands right now, Vit now up in ninth, Strotsman is going to make a massive gain with three races left. That gap at the front now is going to be three points in the championship between Vit and Strotsman as we head into Lardos in just a, couple, in just a week's time. I don't think Scott will be thinking that after how long. You have a yellow in sector two. That's gone green now. Yeah, he's about five or six feet out. Obviously, that allowed a lot of guys to gain points on him, but you know, somehow he's managed to stay in this battle. You know, a lot of different winners. And now it looks like he can take full advantage of this one with it having the poor qualifier. We jump back towards Steel. I know we're um, focusing on the same few drivers here. Skull Kid is a three second penalty down in 16th place, just by ahead of Lillibum and Sid Sandwich. Day 3 are actually forming a little bit of a group. Actually, you know what? We'll jump down, we'll give them a little bit of attention. Sid, Lillibum and Skull Kid, the three in this tussle in for 14th place. It's five seconds with behind Stars Orphan is in his own little fight as Marco's lost it in the middle sector and that is a safety car which the McLaren and Sid who cuts the pit lane line. Oh, Sid. 
Couldn't you have done that, mate? That was a little bit cheeky. Looks like there might have been a bit of contact with Magic Realm. We've seen him. He was spun around, so I don't know exactly what's happened there, but obviously it's caused Marco to DNF. It looks like fully see, but it looks like Marco or Magic Realm, he's got away without the damage. It's, as you said earlier in the race, it's allowed him to get back into it. I say this as well, this is gonna play into the hands very nicely of all the medium runners and even the soft runners. Those who started on the hards and more importantly steel and fifth starting on the hards. This is not going to help his cause here. He's, he's now got to stay out or try and manage mediums. 28 laps, which, being realistic, is not happening. But this has played brilliantly into the hands of Scotsman, Flo, Mondo and Vic, who can make up a few places, actually, in, uh, in these pit stops. They're in ninth currently. And as I said, that gap now in the championship as Scotsman makes his way into the pits. It will be, at the end of this race, points between the Aston and the Red Bull as Strotsman gets serviced by his team. Frenchy stays out and that's, oh, that's because the flow is pitted so Frenchy would get held for a double stack in those places so that's not helped Frenchy either but Strotsman the flow goes through. Fox is getting serviced but he's got to wait for his team and he's getting a front wing change as well as Fox. It's going to lose him a ton of places. Is David getting serviced and Vitt has gained a place and that is up now to 10th, right behind Breda's crew actually. And there goes Skullkid staying out. He's going to jump a few of these drivers and he's now ahead of the Tattoo Star, now in 8th. And he also started on the hards. Oh! Oh, come on. I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that was from Skullkid. I don't know what he was thinking there. I don't know why he's trying to overtake fish sticks under a safety car. Five second penalty and I think rightfully so there for the Haas. That is not, um, not right. Not right at all. I'm just going even back to French. It's quite a long pit lane time there. I think it's one of the highest on the calendar. And to be the double stack, he did seem to have the gap to the flow. But he managed well. It was by four or five seconds that he had. So even if he did lose a few positions, he wouldn't lose out as much as what he will now if he does have to pit under green flag conditions. Yeah, I can. I don't understand that though, but definitely, this has definitely been worse for Frenchy than it has for Steel. It's still not good for either of them, but Frenchy definitely having the worst end of, uh, I'll say, uh, the worst end of the double edged sword, really between himself and the Mercedes, both of them electing to stay out, as well as Radical, actually, and uh, in the Alpine, they're in fourth. There's himself, doing quite well there, actually. But again, starting on the hards, it's not going to help him in the later safety car, as Skullkid is into the pits to get rid of that five-second penalty, and to get serviced by his team, a set of mediums, for a middle stint to this race before probably another set for the final stint. It'll be a two-stop race now for him. It's actually went in a set of softs, is Skullkid, is, I'm going to say this now, is Skullkid going to try and go one lap on softs and then go for a set of hards to the end? Surely, surely that's not possible, right? Well, you're saying, with how far the field is back, probably will have another lap of safety car, especially if he does pit again to do that. If that is a set of fresh hards, it definitely is a possibility. Well, he's got rid of his five second penalty and obviously he's still got another and it's three seconds on him at the minute but if he does do that that really could bring him back into this fight and if as long as he keeps it clean looks some stuff gets happening in front of him you know he's definitely in the possibility of points yeah we'll definitely see what happens there for him but we'll actually go through all the penalties as mentioned uh skull kid on three seconds with sid and fox Real Winter on 5 seconds for speeding in the pit lane as he lost his front wing. As you look at our position, as you see, uh, obviously the top two haven't stopped yet. Rainbow's yet to stop actually, which uh, is a bit strange. Started on the softs as Rainbow and Radical uh, up in fourth. He started on the hards and have a look at our positions graphic. A bit uh, skew with actually, Radical's gained 10 places, aided of course by some pit stops. 
And Rio Winter started on pole, now down in uh, 11th place, and Bred is trolled down to 9th after his pit stops. I say that's probably a net 6th for Bred is trolled. He's going to be losing 5 places from. Oh, duh, he's not losing 5 places, he's lost 3 places from where he started, and Nigel has confirmed that the Hards will not do 30 laps. So, there goes Stroll Kid's suggestion of uh, go to the end or a Hail Mary. Uh, Frenchie's up five, Steele's up two, but it's been a, a stagnant race, I think. From Steele, Scotsman, our net leader, actually. He's made his pit stop onto Hards and can probably get to the end. Unless uh, something else throws a span around the works. Mondo up two places, Tattoo Star up five, Magic Bram down seven after his front wing change as well. And shockingly enough, Fish Sticks is the only driver to maintain station in this whole field. He's started in seventh and he's remained in seventh at this first safety car of the race. Go back to our time graphic. So, Crossray, anyone, um, anyone sticking out to you as to having a decent start to this race? I think, um, I think one driver actually being David Wallface, up to 12th and is on a set of, I'll say, on a set of mediums now for his second stint. Could he make more, um, more inroads and maybe even think, think about points? Yeah, well, he's got McVitt in front of, well, in front of Rarewinter, he's in front of uh, himself. If he can even try to get past Rarewinter pretty early under this. Uh, restart. He obviously does have the tire advantage. Even stay with McBit. We have seen McBit fight through the field. Maybe that could be his chance to just follow McBit through. Going to give a couple of positions through later on when he will have to obviously pity him. And away we go. Safety car in the pits. Lap 12 in Mexico and Steel is not wasting any time. He wants to get by Frenchy as quick as he can and maybe think about pulling a gap towards Scotsman who himself is going three wide. Oh my God, three wide into turn one and Scotsman has done the double on Steel and Frenchy. What a move that is from Scotsman. Into the lead, wasting no time and now run away is the mindset of the Red Bull. It's an absolute crucial restart from Scotsman. We've just seen how powerful the slipstream is under the restarts. Now he's got three cars behind him. That is giving him that buffer to the flow. So now he can just put the foot down, get in this gap that he can on the flow while the flow does have to battle through the cars on the worst set of tires. So it's just all about now how much of a gap can he get, especially with now having to insert the tires to see where they will they go to the end. Because you have Magic Ram and Rainbow at the back instead of collision. Yeah, I think Rainbow might have to spun it on his own there, as we can see. Yeah, I think those soft tyres are gone from Rainbow 11 laps on them. And it's certainly not helped his cause. But we saw as well the flow was tucked up behind Radical. Looked for a move actually towards turn 9, which even I'll say is optimistic. For the Williams driver, that's not going to happen. But now he's looking for it in towards turn one, and I think he's even before midway down the main straight. He's got ahead of Radical and is up now into fourth place, but also for nearly four seconds now behind Scotsman. That just shows how crucial clear track is to make up time and these places. Meanwhile, David having a feud with his, uh, with his comms, uh, comms um, brethren. We'll say that. Uh, anyway, David and Fox having a feud for 12th, and David not making any games there, but uh, Real Winter has actually got by his teammate and got by Vit. Vit now down in 10th, and he's not having that recovery spark yet, which um, which we saw at Kota. Who else is on the move? Mondo is up in 6th uh, place, right behind Radical, suffering with what the flow did just a lap ago. You see as well the advantage these fresh the fresh R tyres have over Radical, he's not in his pit stop yet, Mongo has, and I think Radical's just accepted it, that he's not going to fight that too hard, as there's a car that's went straight on there, I'm not sure who that was, I think, is that the Tattoo Star? I'm not sure, but he's losing places, and there's a whole train of them going through the stadium as the TRS is enabled, Vet is somehow up to, how's, how's Vet done that then? He was 10th a minute ago, now he's in 7th! Uh, the two stars just coming up in the main in the stadium section. <coughs> he just looks like he got called out by the car in front a bit earlier. 
He's just obviously had to take the boy matching, which has made him run wide. As he is looking to get this move done on Bray's coat, just can't make that really happen. Well, David then tucked up right behind the tattoo star and didn't get the overtake done there. But now tattoo star looking for the move in towards the turn forward, pulls to the inside, but he's not brave enough on the brakes and he's not close enough to make that move on Bray this cool. And the Ferrari ahead of the Red Bull, and as well, I saw as well, the flow got by steel, and that's now two of the cars between himself and Strotsman that was, well, that was the two cars, is now gone, and now ahead of him is his teammate, Frenchie. But look at our leader graphic. Five and a half seconds between the flow and Strotsman, who's just bolted from the start and has 67% battery and climbing is the Red Bull. He's in full control of this race, and I'd say probably his to lose is a yellow flag in sector two, and that's Magic Ram, who's had a spin at the stadium. No, not quite the stadium. Oh, it's gone again at the S's. Magic Ram compounding the Alpine misery for himself and Radical has actually made his pit stop to get on a set of mediums. So is Rainbow actually down at the back of the field. There's, there's Fox making a pit stop. Let's look at uh, Fox real quick. Does he have wing damage? He does. He does have wing damage. It's another nose change for the Alfa Romeo driver, and that's not what he wanted in this race, and Rainbow gets a three-second penalty at the back. Steele now down in sixth behind Fish Sticks and trying to probably back up Real Winter, or at least use uh, Fish Sticks to try and tome along as Magic Ram has retired in the pit lane and called it a day. In Tier 4, lap 15, we have lost Marco, losing it at the S's section, and Magic Ram retiring in the pits after the spin at the S's and I think rather um, disappointed with how the race unfolded for the Alpine driver. As Vic gets a three second penalty and that is important as well regarding Strotsman and I think Steele who's just slowly starting to fall away in this race here. He hasn't made his pit stop, doesn't help, he started on hards and is now looking if he's going to be fighting for scraps here unless anything arrives in around five or six laps time. Like, you know, Frenchy into the pits, getting off there immediately. So, we'll have the freshest set of hogs. Obviously, it's not make it to the end. Now, this is just how much can he recover. He'll be probably looking for a good late safety card. Get back into this fight, get a fresh set of soft storm. Just to see if he can pick his way through the field. Yeah, definitely a recovery drive for Epic French in 10 seconds behind Stars Orphan and Strokehead as well, who are having their own little fight. There's a yellow flag in Sector 2, and there's Rainbow getting out of the way of Strotsman, so Rainbow's got to be a bit careful here, being a, uh, getting lapped by the field behind. He's, he's, fairing, he's fairing quite well as Rainbow, he's sitting in there, hoping for a safety car or anything to get him back in the race. But Strott's been keeping that gap, and there's now 4.8 seconds. The flow has made a little bit of gains, actually, in this lap. As Steele gets a penalty, two going through the middle sector, and that's just not going to help his cause, as he's now fighting with Rhea Winter. Around the outside goes the Ferrari. Gets the squeeze there in Steele, but he's not going to let him through as the Mercedes, and now there's Vit right behind him. Rhea Winter looking down the inside at the stadium. There goes Vit, cuts the corner, actually, and gets the move done in the Ferrari, as Steele's now starting to back all of them up. Vit almost in the pit lane there, and Rhea Winter gets the place back, and so does Brett is true. He's now made the gains, and Steele is under, um, I think he's under what we call serious trouble. Going down his main street, he's going to lose a ton of places here. There goes Rhea Winter, there goes Brett is true, there goes the Tattoo Star, and here comes Vic. Down towards turn one, Vic tucks in line, and the Tattoo Star actually making up three, three places from the Tattoo Star. He's probably heard what Scott's been done and just said, anything you can do, I can do better and probably trump that, says the Tattoo Star. But Rhea Winter fighting back with the extra battery and he keeps the place ahead of the Tattoo Star. But for a moment, he got three cars down the main straight. It just shows as well how crucial it is, the DRS round here, and even more crucially, how much battery you store up for the, for the course of the race and when you actually use it. Just had a change for P2 there, just in the turn one, Mongo down the inside of the flow, so Mongo's been released and it's like three tenths he's caught up the Scotsman since he's been released. This could be one to look out for, but it's P2 
10 or 15 laps. Mongo can keep this pace up and start to reel in Scotsman. As well, Fish Lips is sticking in there. Down in, in pardon me, I say down in fourth place. He's <laughs> up in fourth and has made up quite a few places in this race. Why don't you have a look? He's made up three places in this race. Started in seventh place, did the Mercedes driver. And is now up in the fringes of a podium place. Is there, oh, that's uh, Rainbow getting a bit skew whiffed in the main straight. I think probably keeping an eye on those behind him. As David said, and still crucially for him, is in the pits and gets off of those tyres. So now 18 laps to the end for Steel. And now around the outside goes Fish Dix, bangs the wheel slightly with the flow, who shows in the outside, but Fish Dix hangs in there, gets the traction down out of turn six. Is he going to get the third place? Flow holds it around the outside, but he gets the traction too, and the flow just about holds on. But these two, they can't afford to fight because Mondo will just break away from them. As there's a yellow flag, I think that's Rainbow again keeping out of the way of everyone. Doing very well to stay out of the way, actually, of those around him. As I think he's actually almost pulled over there to let the Haas of Skullkid through. Down 11 places, Skullkid on a set of softs. Expect him in the pits in like two or three laps' time. As Fish Dicks is a bit deep there into the stadium. Just about gets away with it, though. But for the flow, one second exactly going through the, the detection point. Is he going to get the DRS here? Down the main straight. And he isn't going to get the DRS despite being within the one second of Mondo. He's not going to get it. And this is now a good chance here for Fish Dicks to get the overtake on the Williams using the DRS, but no Bassey to help him. And that's going to haunt him a little bit. Fish Dicks sticking in there. But if these three know what's better for them, they'll just accept that they need to work together to close that gap to Scotsman. That's now 4.6 seconds between the Red Bull and now the Alfa Romeo of Mondo. Maybe going to have to be not on Frenchy here. He's just set the fastest lap. But actually nice. Fresh has set a heart on the whole thing. Nice chance. Try to not have any battery, which is the only problem for him. But you know, the whole group, the group of them are quite bunched up together. So you know, from DRS from the DRS train. We could see him up towards very red red and start star very soon if he keeps up this pace. Unfortunately for him, though, he's going to be tucked up behind Stroker through this middle sector. Stroker on nine lap old softs, Epic Frenchy on three lap old hards. So he can get to the end of the race. But for everyone else, it's going to be about tyre management and can they get to the end of the race. But Frenchy around the outside of Skullkid, who doesn't really fight that too hard. And now Frenchy up to 11th place. And next up for him is the Alpha Tauri of Stars Orphan. Vit now down in 8th with the Tattoo Star ahead of him. As Sid gets another penalty down in 16th place is Sid having a fight there with David Lowface. Vit down towards turn one, Tattoo Star not getting DRS, Vit is getting DRS but isn't close enough to make the overtake stick as there's a yellow flatter in sector one and sector three, that's, uh, I think that's Rainbow just keeping out of the way. F1 name keeping on the letter with the yellow flats, thank you very much. Lap 20 in Mexico, FPRL Scotsman, first time I've actually said his full name actually, is leading the way. Got the overtake done on lap four, had a, a short feud with Real Winter but the Ferrari losing their front wing and Scotsman has had full control and seized the race since and he's held first place hostage to be honest five seconds between himself and Mondo his own little feud now with the flow the Williams and the Alfa Romeo actually in their own little fight in the Constructors Championship too not too much separating them in the standings so this is important for them as well if they want to try and uh I'll try and take an advantage with three races left after tonight and Fish Dicks holding on to fourth place and it'll be a bit of a rare podium actually for Fish Dicks in tier four. Can he make the move onto the podium? I don't know because the flow's getting a DRS and the flow's actually going to make the move against Mondo in towards turn one. As Steel gets another penalty down in 13th and that'll really hurt his chance for points. And as I mentioned earlier on, regarding the championship, Scotsman does he have the fast? I don't know, he doesn't have the fastest lap. That is Epic Frenchy now up in 10th ahead of Stars Orphan. And Vit actually fighting with the tattoo start. He's got the overtake done, and Vit now up to 7th place, and Steele now has the fastest lap. And Steele's the fastest lap. I didn't want to say it, but I had to say it. 
actually look at our championship standings as they stand right now. So Strotsman on 25 points, that will put him on 162. Vit up in seventh place, that will put him, uh, I'll give him six points. That will put him on 169. So as it stands, it's a seven point gap between Vit and Strotsman still out of the points and is going to remain on 137. So as it, as it stands for the moment, it is a 32 point gap between the top three as we head to Brazil in a sprint race as well the next week. So all the more points, and all the more chance to gain and lose everything in this championship. As Mongo looking to regain second place, but eight times behind the flow, who has actually put the hammer down now. He's gained a second on Stotsman in the last lap. The flow's definitely not messing about now. And he's decided that I'm done playing games. Now we are going to tire along and catch up to that Red Bull. Scotsman now, he's just slowing up the pace a bit. He's got plenty of battery to fight with if they do get a bit too close for his like and that he can't just pull that gap out of the game and really control this race how he has been doing for the past 12, 13 laps. Fish Dick's not you know, he's coming up towards his pit lane for about three, four laps. You know, he's going to drop right down to the field. So that's the two Ferrari boys, good chance to try to make up some positions as it looks like Ray Winter's really off the pace now compared to his teammate. Obviously that pace that we've seen in qualifying just really isn't being replicated at the race. I don't know if there's a problem with him or it's just the tyre wears a bit too much for him. I'm not sure what's happened to Rio Winter, but 15 lap hold hard. He could be thinking about tyre management towards the end, because it'll be 29 laps on those tyres to get to the end, and it'll be a good... It'll be a good effort from Rio Winter to get them that far, but he's also got to keep an eye behind him, because he is on a penalty of five seconds. Vit on three seconds, and a tattoo start is so far on a clean slate. Meanwhile, in towards turn one, Mondo has said that we're not playing your game to the flow and has now retook second place and Fish Sticks falls him through now up to third. So the flow trying to tatter, trying to um, help everyone along here is not really helping his case here as Radical into the pits and out of the race. He has called it a day. Picking up a three second penalty and a fight with Fox. And that is it for the Alpine driver. And Alpine not scoring any points here in Mexico. That's not going to help them in the championship as Radical has left the session too. Called it a night and is probably up to go put his feet up. And I don't blame him to be honest. This track is very hard to run it clean and not get a penalty, which so far around half of our drivers are actually fading quite well to win in that regard. Have a look still at this fight for third between Fish Sticks and the, uh, the Flow. But can Fish Sticks keep within the one second DRS window? of Mongo, it's going to be close and I don't think he is, he's missed it by two thousandths of a second and that is not what the Mercedes needs on 14, 15 now, pardon me, on lap old mediums the flow on 15 lap old hards, Fish Sticks will have to stop again but it's about when he stops and if he can get that um, safety car he's almost begging for at this point of the race and now the flow having DRS he's not going to make the move in turn one but I say that, this is probably um, the main attraction actually in this race. Everyone else getting a little bit split up now across the field as the race progresses. And these three, the only drivers within close proximity towards one another. As Fishsticks went a bit deep down towards turn six, they asked to flow right behind them and Fishsticks is starting to suffer on those tyres as there's a yellow flag, there's Rainbow getting out of the way again. As in the back, oh my god! Well, that certainly um, woke me up. Red is cool having a bit of a lag spike there, and I thought he almost lost it there, went into the wall, but thankfully Codemasters are just uh, testing if I was paying attention, and yes, I was. Thank you, Mr. Codies. Red is cool having a bit of a lonely race right now, up in fifth. After starting in sixth, now ahead of his teammate, Rare Winter, both of them entire management phases now to the end. But one driver as well is struggling, is uh, maybe say Vit? Is struggling, is, is going to struggle as well. 15 lap old mediums as well as the tattoo star. Fish sticks on 16 lap old mediums, but that's because he started lap 25. Vit about to do that right about now. 
So 16 lap old mediums and he will probably have to stop again. So there's a few drivers banking on this safety car. But crucially as well, Frenchy and Steele are not having to. So they can now go to the end on these tyres. And I think now it's about how many of these drivers ahead of them. More probably Fish Sticks, Vit, Rare Winter, the Tattooed Star. Can they stretch these tyres another 12 laps and somehow get them to the end? The Rare Winter could be hoped for a safety car here. Um, just 18 lap old hards is really going to start struggling at the very end of this race, past, uh, the last four or five laps. Which you can see Vit, he coming to. Sorry, not Vit, uh, Frenchy coming to contention with that one. We've just seen fish sticks, he's just made a little slide to him, some other tires, off starting to get play on him. Just now, how long did he give it before he called it the safety car just to get onto the softs to bring him to the end? It looks like that is right about now as he does come into the pits. Yeah, he's not taking any chances there, fish sticks. Lap 26, he's going to have 11 laps on a set of medium tyres, I would imagine. Oh, it's a set of softs. Soft. Yeah, he's double stinted on his mediums already. Oh, that answers it. Vit in the pits as well. This will be a set of softs as, as well. That's a strange one. Anyway, as well, Epic French is in a second on the tattooed star in the space of a sector. So Frenchy, these tyres are now really starting to help his cause. And as well, Steele, only three seconds behind, but still dragging along six seconds of time penalties. That's going to hurt him towards the end. And I'm going to say as well, Fish Sticks down in ninth now on fresh soft. So he can maybe eat them out to the end. But Vit down in 13th. And this right now is beautifully playing into the hands of Scotsman, who's just going about his business at the front. 5.1 seconds ahead of Mongo. The flow 1.1 behind the Alfa Romeo. And you've got the Ferrari duo of Bread is Cool and Rare Winter, Tattoo Star and Frenchy now in 7th place and was within DRS range of the Tattoo Star as Vic is a penalty. That's now 6 seconds for him and this is not going to go the way of the Aston or the Mercedes tonight and this is all coming up trumps here for Scotsman as with 10 laps to go in Mexico. All he's got to do is just keep it within the lines and he's going to take another podium and another victory in this campaign. Yeah, it looks like this break's really revived him. He's getting much stronger than ever. Two races and a minute. Looks like one podium and a win. It's definitely put him straight into this fight with Vit. And I think Vit would be a bit worried now going into the final three races of this season that maybe he's had his chance and he just hasn't taken full advantage of what he had. Maybe now Scotsman's just going to just go for it hell or broke. Maybe he'll try to go for this championship before he even get to the last race even in Abu Dhabi. Is, it actually retires the car. He's called it with the penalties he had. Vit is out of the race. Our championship leader is not going to score in Mexico. And Scotsman now, as I said, Regarding Nigel Piddle in tier two, he's now got that Jeremy Clarkson grin on his face, his biggest smug smile as he rounds the final corner. Nine laps left to go, and all he's just got to do is just is just keep doing what he's been doing. 5.7 seconds between himself and Mondo, but now the flow wanting to take back that second place. Bred is two now in fourth, and Frenchy now 10 seconds behind the behind the Ferrari. It's a great all task for him to get on the podium, I'll say that, but never say never for the Williams driver. Can he maybe salvage fifth or even fourth place? We don't know. As Fristix takes the fastest lap, the Tattoo Star defending from Steel London in towards turn one. Is he to get the place still on basically zero basket, like he has done for most of the race? And Steel is just going to be about getting to the end and taking as many points as he can. Just to, just to close that gap on Vit, who isn't scoring, and to limit the damage to Scotsman, because right now Steele is going to be looking here for 6th place, or maybe, yeah, probably 6th place here, if the Tattoo Star and Fish Sticks don't get a penalty, because he's got a, a t around a 14 second window to Willie Bum, who's actually drove a very strong race himself to get in the points. Real Winter made a pit stop actually, they get into 10th. 
So he's not fancying his tyres to get to the end and is uh, probably pushing the McLaren through the middle set. We'll jump on board with the Ferrari and indeed he is pushing the McLaren around turn 7 and that scratch and goodness me the advantage he has on those softs around the outside he goes and he's tied the, 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 he has tied the McLaren. That's not what he needs. He just about gets out of the way there of David Lowface who finds himself now in the points but that was a bit naughty that from Real Winter. But I think Willie Bum could have maybe backed out a little bit sooner as there goes the flow in towards turn one. Getting ahead of Mondo and this is probably going to be where these two are fighting for second place. Until the check of flag, Scott's been now six seconds ahead of these two and can just do whatever he wants really and will still win. He can pull over, um, grab a coffee and do a donut and then still, uh, then still win this race. He's been absolutely unstoppable today. From lap seven onwards, he's just had this race by the scruff of the neck and has not let go. Quite interesting now, and I was staying in Peter in the championship, seeing Fresh Dicks on the fresh tyres. I was wondering why they want to play the team game. Was he going to let Fresh Dicks go and take on Tattoo Xar? It looks like he has, so he probably just try to hope to stick onto the back of Fresh Dicks as much as he can. And hope, try to follow through on Tattoo Xar, be in that position back. Just Hope to God that he can try to catch up even to Frenchie, especially with the pace that Fresh Dex is going to have in these next couple of laps. I think what's going to be critical though is can Steele keep with, keep six seconds between himself and Real Winter because on those fresh softs, Real Winter is going to gain boatloads of time for this middle set, as you see there. He's gained nearly a second on Steele in the course of this lap, and Fresh Dex has now got ahead of the tattoo start and is up now into sixth place. Two and a half seconds between himself and Epic Frenchie, so can he get himself up in the top five as Mongo and Flo still fighting in towards turn three. Mongo now having the DRS, he's going to have the jump on the flow, slipstream, DRS and the battery as Steele's called it a day in the pits. So now Steele's not going to score points. This is all just playing perfectly at the Scotsman's hands. Yeah, Scotsman couldn't have dreamed of any better situation now. If he could somehow get the fastest lap, then he'd be tied on points. But as well as stands, he's one point right behind Vip. Going into uh, Brazil, especially with being a sprint race, extra points on offer for him. They even try to overtake Vip and extend that lead if he can do that. For some this year, you definitely want to tune in to FPRL, especially for we're closing stages in our championships, tier two, tier three, and tier four, and tier one as well. And how do you watch that? I'm glad you asked. Twitch.tv forward slash FP Racing League. Be sure to hit that follow button and turn your notifications on, and you will not miss a single minute of the streams. And as well, if you want to join the league, exclamation mark F1 in our Twitch chat. That will give you a link to our recruitment server and you'll be able to join up, complete the steps and this will be you one day. And with our season drawing to an end, season seven on the horizon, there's no better time to put your name down for FPRL. Meanwhile, Scotsman again just going about his business now, somehow five and a half seconds between himself and Mondo with all that fighting and first sticks now up to fifth. He's got himself nine seconds to make up to bread as cool who's in full tire management mode and that's going to help fish sticks cause and it's about pulling that gap to Epic Frenchie. Three seconds there for the Mercedes. Pushing it a little bit too hard as Fish Sticks. But I think at the end of the day, fifth place, I think you would have uh, probably two charm off for that, to be fair. And a very strong effort from Fish Sticks. And as well, Real Winter. Three seconds behind the Tattoo Star, who I'm going to say that's 22 laps on a set of mediums. That is a very solid effort from the Tattoo Star to manage them that far. And at, and at that... He looks on for eighth place here, unless he doesn't, unless he gets a puncture. Which is David Lowface now up in ninth, Fox in tenth, and Willie Bum now at the point. It's just been overtook by the Alpha Romeo. But Rare Winter, I, I'd imagine the Tattoo Stars aren't going to fight this battle, even if he did have, um, even if Rare Winter had both hands and arms tied up. Tattoo Stars got no chance here against the Ferrari. You see as well how much time Rare Winter's gained in that stadium. And he's not even pushing too hard as the flow retakes second place in real winter. You can probably get him without the DRS here, can the Ferrari. Tattoo Star on 6% battery, real winter on 35%. This is going to be a lost cause for the Tattoo Star, but it's, again, 
It's about tyre management and taking as many points as he can, which looks like it's going to be a handful for the Red Bull driver. And it's going to help him out in the Constructors' Championship too. As Rear Winter and again a tattoo star just going to accept his fate. Rear Winter in towards turn four. Probably the easiest overtake of his race. Up now into seventh place as a Ferrari. And can he catch Epic Frenchy? He's five seconds to the Williams. And you just see him there, just ahead there, going into the S section. Can the Ferrari somehow salvage sixth after starting on pole? Yeah, it's a great recovery drive for Rare Winter after what happened to him earlier on in the race when he lost the tail. And it's just kept a clean, as we say, and obviously has picked up the pace on the set of softs. We probably will see him maybe a good laugh with a battle to keep an eye out for, for that uh, 3-6. Especially with Fish gets picking up that 3 second penalty. If he does get that battle over done with at the start of the last lap, you know, he could even push on for the P5 with Fish Dicks having that 3 second penalty. Just seen there, in the... Uh, in the Leaderboards. Fox got ahead of David Lowface in towards the stadium. And now Fox up to ninth, some 17 seconds behind the tattoo star. So I don't see him catching that up, but never say never. But as well, regarding David, how much of a penalty is he on? He's on three seconds. If he can keep if he can keep that gap to the McLaren, he is on for points in this race as the Alpha Tauri driver. But another thing I'm gonna point out here, Red is true slowly starting to catch up to the flow and Mondo, all they're fighting is now meant they're gonna is now meant he's reeling in that Williams as Rear Winter gets a three second penalty and that is gonna give a bit of a sigh of relief to Epic Frenchy who now looks like he's gonna take sixth place but the flow out of the DRS window and the Stockman's actually Stockman made a mistake somewhere he's now lost he's now lost a second in uh, in that lap I think he's just maybe trying to go for fastest lap. I doubt it though, in 25 lap old hards. But, never seen ever. Yeah, he's dumping the battery, there he is, so. I think he tried it on the last lap, I don't know, just hasn't worked out for him. I think he's just going to have to settle for the 25 points. And sadly, just not take that uh, tied uh, P1 in the driver's stands and just keep that one for next week. You, know, you say just the 25 points. It's 25 points he <laughs> would have been begging for at the start of this race. And it certainly went every possible way it could perfectly for the Red Bull driver. Vitt failing to score. Steele failing to score. Strotsman taking the maximum haul in Mexico with just two and a half laps remaining. The gap at the front, 4.5 seconds between Strotsman and Mondo, the flow. A further second behind, but Bred is true right behind the Williams and in DRS range. Can he have something to say at the end of his race? Can he steal a podium away from the flow or even steal one away from Mongo at the way this is going? The flow now going through the stadium and he's within. Did he get the DRS there? I think he's just missed it. This is not going to help him in his fight with Bred is cool round to start lap, the uh, penultimate lap, and the flow did not get DRS. And now Brad is cruising right behind the Williams, as you see there, Mondo defending, uh, defending shadows into towards turn one, just breaking the slipstream there to the flow, making sure he doesn't get any of it. And I think Fish Stick's charge is gonna be halted with uh, two laps remaining. He's now six seconds behind the Brad is true, and on that time penalty, it's not gonna happen as the tattoo star is in the pits, he just couldn't make it. But I wonder, is this gonna be for a fastest lap attempt? He should get out in 11th place. He could get steal a point here, can the tattoo star, but I don't know if that was a puncture or not for the Red Bull. If it was, it must it was true to get a puncture at this stage of the race. He didn't do anything wrong. And he is out in, a, in 12th place behind Star's Orphan and Willie Bum. He's got a lot of time to make up. There's a tattoo star, some seven seconds if he wants a point, and I think really he deserves a point for this race. Yeah, it's a word that he's did say in punctures, obviously, I would just come into the last lap. I did say in the chat, Nigel Pickles still saying he can't see these hearts making it to the end. It would be an interesting last lap still if Scotland has kept the tyre conservation. 
putting this one home, which he should have done with such a big lead of in around five seconds on average throughout basically the last 23, 24 laps. As we get underway for the final lap, and all of that, talking about uh, the tattoo star, Brendan Cool actually did get on the podium now and is ahead of the flow, but can he hold on to it? As going through turn three, the flow wants to regain this place, but he's not going to have the battery or the straight line speed he needs. Brendan Cool is going to have enough in hand to steal the podium away from the flow unless he can send one at the final chance he gets down towards turn 11 and the stadium, but he's made a mistake there and I think that is it for the flow. He is not yet getting the podium in Mexico after a valiant effort, but one man who's not put a foot wrong is this Red Bull here, going through the S's for the final time at Scotsman as he makes his way to the stadium and to appreciate the crowd for the, for the final time. Give a quick victory wave or a victory uh, wave as you usually do in Scotland, known as a single finger salute for the Red Bull driver. But Scotsman, we salute you. What a performance around the final corner. And it's going to be for the first time in many a race, it's Scotsman who wins in Mexico. Viva la Scotsman. That's how it's done for the Red Bull. Mongo takes second, and Bred as Kills takes the podium from the flow by four tenths of a second. Fish sticks a solid effort to take fifth. Epic French will take sixth place after Rear Winter's penalty. The Fox further back is going to maybe hold on to eighth. It's going to take eighth place here, but can David hold on to ninth or tenth? Because the Tattoo Star is gaining rapidly on David Wallface, and I don't think he's going to hold on here. Tattoo start on that fresher rubber. He's got to get within three seconds of David, is, and he's just ticked under. David's going to cross the line to take ninth. The Tattoo Star will steal that from him, though, but David Lowface will take a point in Mexico. Good effort from him to recover from 14th place. Stars Orphan will take 11th. Willie Bum, Skull Kids, Sid Sandwich, and Rainbow will round out the order. And Scotsman, the dream scenario for him. And now we head to Brazil. One point in it between the top two. Yeah, what a race. You know, Scotsman is dominated the race near enough from start to finish. Mongo in the flow, battling all the way through the race. Never gave each other a second. And obviously, Bresco, good recovery drive. Just managed to pick P3 on the penultimate lap off the flow. So he's going to be a bit disappointed with that one, but. Great for the Ferrari driver, he'll be happy enough with that, especially knowing that he didn't really have the pace on his teammate, just showing really how much in the race that he could uh, be his teammate. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think we let you. I think the cold let you off for as long as it could be a frost race. It'll be a diet of honey and uh, honey and lemons, uh, giving up the Guinness for tonight. And there's the Red Bull team appreciating Scotsman. And that is everything that he needed, especially on their return, picking up the podium, third place at Cota, and now a victory in Mexico. Viva Estrothia for Scotsman. What a performance for him. And another victory to his name. I've made that his third victory in Tier 4. And can he somehow steal... I'll say somehow steal away the lead of the championship next time out in Brazil. We'll find out, and you'll find out too, on the FPRL Twitch channel. Mondo will take second place in a pendulum battle with the flow, which bred as true, um, walked in and said uh, to the flow, we're picking you out, and he takes third place with the Ferrari driver. Started third and finishes in third after that really poor start. The flow will take fourth though, regardless, a strong effort from him. Fish sticks from seventh to fifth, and that three setting penalty halted his, halted his charge for the podium. Frenchy kept it clean and finishes ahead of Rare Winter, who will take the bonus point for fastest lap in seven. Mongo, Tattoo Star, just ran out of tyres at the end, but will still take a few points in ninth. And David Lowface will take a sole point in tenth. And our results for the back Marco, Magic Ram, Radical, and importantly, Vit and Steel did not score. Rainbow, Sid, Skull Kid, Willie Bob, and Stars Off and round out the field. Well, that's uh, that's tier four in the books, and that's um, well, that does it for a race. 
as we fail to join a session that we were leaving. Thank you, Toadmasters. And I see Sid isn't best pleased with his efforts, but still, get the bad race at the system. As we head to the showroom, so we should be having Scotsman, Weather's Cool, and Mongrel hopefully joining us up, fingers crossed. And as for the moment, we do have Scotsman here, and I uh, might actually be that. We'll give our drivers a minute though to join up. As we get the red one up on the screen for our race winner. And uh, dare I ask, Cross today, do you want to have a quick word with uh, with a race winner? Of course you do. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, congratulations, mate. Absolutely stunned for drive. Obviously, it's yeah. your first win since Spain. What has been? So, I think it's been a long time coming. I think that break's just really stood at you well. So, it has you obviously <clears throat> came back to two races, uh, went one podium. You couldn't have asked for any other better way. I, I really wasn't expecting it. Uh, uh, I just came on the night. I uh, just stopped my practice in the day. But good setup. Uh, and I just drove it. Uh, and I think I got a good start for the safety car. Uh, I got a double take done on the street. I was, I was hoping I was getting that point, so I wasn't going to fit in anybody and you know, stuck into the various points and stuff. I just wanted to get out in front. <coughs> Then dropping back and dropping back. Just tried to stick the that five second the better gap because in the first few laps I got two warnings. So I went the rest of the way without getting a warning. I was wrapping my pants. Yeah, I think that safety car restart really did set the tone. You got past them. And as soon as you could, straight into turn one, obviously, with the massive uh, slipstream. That, obviously, I think it gave you a three-car buffer to the next car. I think it was the flow that mm. was the next set on the hards. And, obviously, you were able to grab that five-second gap that you wanted. And you just kind of played with them, you know. You, you let them get down to four seconds. Just bring that back up again. Just, you know, teasing them. But, overall, absolutely great drive. Um, Cheers, mate. There's a little thing in the chat that we were thinking about was the tyres towards the end of the race. Was it ever a concern or? <clears throat> well, I was going to pit like with 10 laps left uh, and the computer was telling me to pit in. And I just thought, you know what, just go with it. I still had, I think it was like, I was, just, I was near enough 60 odd percent near the end. So, so <clears throat> maybe in the 70s. I was, I was trying not to look at too many stuff with my MFD because that's when I started losing the, when it went from the five seconds to the four seconds. Uh, when I started concentrating on other people's times and, and tires and stuff, that's when I lose my concentration. I was paranoid that I was going to spin off at the S's because it started just feeling like a little bit loose, so I'd take just come off the throttle a little bit more, more in each lap. But I'm happy. Yeah, then moving on next week, Brazil sprint race <laughs> uh, weekend, and obviously now with that result and with everything basically going in your favour today with steel with Vet. Both retire in the cars. I think that puts you one behind fit in the championships. Um, did you ever think that was going to be a thing? Did you think coming back that you really no. wouldn't be in a championship fight? No, no. I, I sort of think when I came back, I thought, right, I could maybe try and keep third. Uh, but like, like say last week, what was it? The third place I got, and then yeah. this week, <clears throat> this week first place, but. And all that's going to be happy, but in steel anyway, they're going to be happy because next week I can't make it. I won't be next week. That just is a big shadow of disappointment because <laughs> we were looking straight forward to that one with you. Uh, so close in the uh, title it's, fight. It's my son's birthday on Sunday, so 
Oh yeah, like for me before everything, mate. Yeah. But absolutely great drive, mate. Congratulations on the win. Yeah. Um, Cruiser, I don't know if you're here, but I think it's a well-deserved uh, driver of the day. Or Scotsman just dominated it from near enough start to finish. Obviously had the battle with uh, Rare Winter at the start of the race until Rare Winter made that mistake. And from there, I think it was the one-man band kind of thing. That, that bat so the first few laps were, was good. And I don't really know uh, Rare Winter, so <clears throat> I know he's quite aggressive, so I was quite paranoid. Uh, but then I would overtake him, he would overtake me, then I would get him the next lap, he would get me the next lap, and I thought this is going to be really exciting. And then, yeah, I don't know what happened to him, but, yep. It well, yeah. wasn't meant to be, but who's there if you want to sign us off for the night? Yeah, I think I he's away. Oh, no, no, he's no I'm here. No, just like, just like you two have the, have the spotlight and a friendly chat. But as I say this about Scott, it's been a big welcome back and I think all of us here um all of us here missed you. And I'll pass on my happy birthdays to um to, to Junior well. for um for next weekend and a big Hi, well done Steven. to yourself right. for winning tonight. Thanks, mate. And that though is gonna be it for tonight's FPRL tier four race around Mexico. Uh, be sure to ch- uh, keep an eye out on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash FP Racing League, where if our tier one race will go ahead on Monday the 27th of November before we head to Interlados for our final sprint race of the season in Brazil and as Crossery did say Scotsman picking up driver of the day and the victory so a double for Scotsman not quite the hat trick but we'll see what Brazil holds where Vit and Steel are both out for a response so expect a bit of uh, a bit of fire and frenzy in Entelados, and I will see you all on Wednesday for my race, joined, I hope, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully, by Fox and General Jake for then. If not, I will definitely be General Jake. But, Frosty, thank you for joining me in the commentary box, and I'd imagine you're going to go have a lie down. Well, I'll try to, at least. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, and of course, the cold is nothing, um, nothing to them. Uh, we all wish to have, but that's what it is. It's that time of year. It's very cold up north. But that has been Cross Today 1888 and this has been Cruiser 1872. Thank you all very much for watching. And from all of us here at FPRL, we will acknowledge the Mercedes of Nigel Crowder because he's going to win Tier 2 and Stiff Mice is winning Tier 3. I'm going to say it. I've jinxed them both, so I'm in, I'm in trouble. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching and from all of us here at FPRL, good night.